I don't care how many people want it or how much fun it would be for him to be back in his old seat. We need to be realistic. Remember how happy we all were when Daniel Ricciardo was announced at Alpha Tauri? With Checo Perez struggling in that second Red Bull seat, everyone saw him on a clear path to his old team where he scored 7 out of his 8 wins. Now that this season is done and Ricciardo has done a little less than half a season, we can make up the balance and look forward. Let's go through a few things together to see if he'll make it into that seat or not. I'm Wimbo, here's 3 seconds to leave a like. Beating 4 time world champion Vettel made Ricciardo one of the biggest contenders for a world title at the time. He won 7 races in his time at Red Bull and that was with seasons where there were no engine let him down 7 or 8 times per season which was very frustrating for him. It's 11 races in a row that he's been out qualified by his teammate Max Verstappen and there was absolutely nothing he could do today. He has a driving style where he goes fastest when the car has oversteer and a strong front end. And with his great feeling for his rear tires, he can turn in low speed corners very quickly. He is also called the king of late braking. He was always prepared to make a late lunge into a corner and then break later than the opponent and pass them. In Baku at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, he did this to three cars granting him the victory in 2017. The story of why he left Red Bull is something I talked about in a previous video, which you can see if you click on the end screen at the end of this video. Daniel Ricciardo raced 7 full races this season and scored 6 points. He made his return on the grid in Hungary where he finished P13 and beat his teammate Yuki Tsunoda because he finished P15. In Spa Francorchamps, Ricciardo finished P16 where Yuki Tsunoda scored a point in P10. Then in Zandvoort, my home race, Ricciardo crashed and broke his hand making him miss 5 races. He returned to the grid in his favorite country America at the Austin Grand Prix. He finished out of the points in P16 while Yuki scored a P8. Best race of the season for Danny Rick was in Mexico. He showed his old form again and finished P7. Tsunoda finished P18. In Brazil Daniel finished P13 while his Japanese teammate scored points in P9. Alpha Tauri didn't do much of a show in Las Vegas as they both finished outside of the points P14 for Ricciardo, P18 for Tsunoda. The final race in Abu Dhabi showed the same as what we've seen in 2023. Ricciardo outside of the points in P11 and Tsunoda a nice P8. Now I didn't re-watch every single race and there may have been factors why Yuki Tsunoda did better in 5 of the 7 races together but to me it's clear that Ricciardo isn't back to his former days yet. Obviously Yuki has made a big step this season seeing the way he performed in a terrible car at the start of the season. Still I'm not gonna lie I expected much more from the man from Perth. Maybe it's because he always brings so much hype. Something I participate in willingly so perhaps it's not fair that I'm a little bit underwhelmed with his races so far. A lot has been going on at AlphaTauri, Red Bull's sister team. The Minardi team was bought by Madicic and renamed Toro Rosso until it was renamed again in 2020. Stories have emerged that the board wasn't happy with the results of AlphaTauri so a few decisions have been made. One of them is that the team will buy their parts from Red Bull again as much as the regulations allow. Another thing that is looked at more closely is that the team is split between England and Italy. The headquarters of the team is in Faenza, but the aerodynamics team is in Bychester. Bychester? Wait, let me google that. Bister. The third change is that the team will get a new name adopted from one of the new big sponsors that we don't know about yet. And this is where Daniel Ricciardo fits in. After Lewis Hamilton he is the most marketable driver out there and funny enough they have the same number of wins the last two seasons. It's a company's dream to have the cheerful Aussie promote their product. Sure I'd buy it if it's not too dear. With Perez securing the P2 spot this season and with all the positive signs from Horner and Marco, I don't see a driver swap happening between Perez and Ricciardo. 
On the Wheel Sports livestream, there was some talk about Logan Sargent's seat not being confirmed yet, and that being a possibility for Perez to race in a less pressured environment at Williams. But personally, I think the grid will stay the same at the start of the season. News just in. Logan Sargent signed another contract with Williams. After an unconvincing season, James Vowles decided not to let Logan Sargent down and extended his contract. I didn't know that at the time of recording. That's why I'm putting in this news flash. Here's what Logan Sargent had to say about it. I am thrilled to be continuing with Williams Racing for the 2024 season. It has been an incredible journey with the team so far, and I am grateful for the opportunity to continue developing as a driver within such a talented and dedicated group. We have exciting plans for the future, and I can't wait to contribute to the team's success in the coming year. I'm glad I said that straight. Now we're continuing with the rest of the video. Ricciardo hasn't shown enough in those seven races to promote him. I don't think he's quite ready yet. I also believe that the new sponsor will have one demand in the contract, and that is that Ricciardo will stay there. As much as I'd love to see a Tsunoda Lawson lineup, I don't think a team that sunk tens of millions of dollars into that team will accept the face of that team to drive somewhere else. In 2024, we'll have the silliest of silly seasons ever. Half the grid will run out of a contract at the end of 2024, and we also need it after a dull silly season in 2023. It was as exciting as the title battle. Daniel Ricciardo needs to make a huge step to be a contender to replace Perez after his contract ends in 2024. I'm talking about making Q3 loads of times, points consistently and one or two amazing results like a P4 or a podium even in a crazy race. He definitely needs to beat Yuki Tsunoda in the standings, which won't be easy as that kid made a big leap too. Perhaps having Ricciardo having fun in the midfield is a better alternative to not having him on the grid at all. For sure, it's one of the narratives that I'll be following closely in the 2024 season. What do you think will happen to the Honey Badger? Leave a comment. Subscribe. Take care now. Doei doei. A special thanks to my channel members. Your help is much appreciated. If you want to support this channel too, click the link down below.